The Opinion Line on Cork's 96FM. Now, Paddy Cannon, I think you discovered Roy Keane when you were away in America. Someone wrote to you or contacted you and told you about him and you were only a teenager yourself. Morning. Good morning, PJ. Yeah, thanks, thanks very much for having me on. Yeah, the, the story with that was I was over in America uh, at a, in a Scottish scholarship back in 1990 and that was prior to mobile phones and internet and uh, messaging instantly. So I used to rely on letters coming every three or four weeks and my older brother, yeah. James, was a great man for following all different types of sports. So I remember opening in September 1990 in a little town in Kentucky called Murray, my post box and really down through the normal family news and stuff and then rush into the sports part of that letter and down to the bottom of the letter was a 19 year old from Mayfield made his debut in Anfield and I was just absolutely blown away and never heard of him uh, barred from local reports um, when he was with the Kennedy Cup teams back in 86 but I didn't know he'd gone over I didn't know that uh, mm. the debut was imminent so just incredible and from that day forward basically I, I've been following him like most most people that love yeah. sport and love soccer When did you get to meet him first? Or I've never him met him no, You've I've never, never met, met him. him? No, no, no never met him seen him out when uh, when uh, things started taking off from in forest for sure like a lot of people I remember the first car he came back with it was black, black Orion, I think, and uh, he was the same age as me, I'm like 51, and he was enjoying the, the, the success and the, the adulation, he was getting a few bob, and I remember it coming back to Cork, seeing him around, because a lot of my friends played with my local club, Wilton United, and they'd have known him through the soccer circle, so I might have seen that, I was watching him on the TV, the FA Cup run, obviously, to 91, and just going on from... Uh, just success to success. So never met him and uh, never spoke to him, but like everybody wow. else, I've been, I've been following him. Wow. And you've collected this huge library of stuff and now you're making your own video documentaries almost in chronological order. Yeah, yeah. And I, that was a deliberate thing, PJ, because uh, it would be very easy for me to to, to jump on the, the, the controversial side and um, go focus in on Saipan or focus in on Alfie Haaland and all the, 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 the negative stuff that takes away from the incredible footballing story and the incredible footballer that Roy Keane was. Mm. So I started basically right at the start, the Rockmount days, and I bring it right up through to the Kennedy Cup days, the move to Cove, the opportunity with the youth game and the, the trying over to, to Forest and right all the way up to two. Where did you get all the footage? Uh, just hard work, PJ. Just sitting down, doing the research, and I have the uh, hundred eight, seven, eight videos now at this stage. But if you go into my playlist section, you'll see that there's another thirty sections inside there. And literally from every game he played, Rockmount up until Celtic, through the Ireland phrases, the youths, the under twenty one, the seniors, everything is chron- chronologically ordered. Mm-hmm. Everything is the full statistics. So if anybody is into the stats. That's the place to go to check that. He's an enigma. I, must, I, I assume you saw the, the Tommy Tiernan interview. And I, I, I never saw two men work so hard. Tommy to get something out of him. <laughs> and Roy to give nothing. And the two of them realised where they were both going. A wonderful interview. Yeah, but the yeah. man is an enigma. What do you make of him, Paddy? I mean, yeah, he has I mean, massive appeal. Everybody loves him. Yeah, it's revealing that interview. Um, in the, the one take that I took from it, I think Roy really, to, in, in my opinion, is most comfortable talking about football. Mm. Other stuff, I think you can see the reserve, the shy side of him, and maybe there was a little bit of that. Um, he, he's a fantastic speaker, but if you if you want to engage King, you need to go at him with football, 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 yeah. football, and I think you'll see the best and best that side. Of him. I don't think he likes. The the, um, the 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 general talk say about his private life now he's very guarded about that and understandably so and we all know the stories about uh, approaching him at the wrong time for a selfie or an autograph yeah. um, <laughs> he doesn't doesn't particularly um, I don't think he's ever comfortable with the with the fact that his, his privacy was gone but that's yeah. the price that he knew he was going to have to pay yeah. when he was going into professional work well, working with Gary Neville has brought him a whole new lease of life in terms of getting out there and 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 sort of being known to the kids and he's he's got a, like a whole there's a whole second phase of Roy now isn't there 
he is, and, and and that's great to see that side coming out. I mean, he's 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 got an incredible intellect, and and he's one one-liners that will put you in stitches for for years. Mm. I mean, some some of the more famous ones, the prawn sandwich comments, I, I prepare, prepare, prepare to prepare to say, yeah, uh, <laughs> don't thank the postman. You know, like where where he pulls them from, how he gets them. <laughs> I don't know, but when he delivers he made them, the World Cup more entertaining for me. Put it that way. Yeah, I mean, isn't don't don't you want to no matter who you're talking, they're conversing with. You want to know what they're thinking, what their what their real opinion on on, on things are. And he calls the spade a spade. That's not for everybody, but for football people, if you simplify it, a guy's either working hard, he's not working hard. You want to you want to get that from Roy Keane, and that's that's gold dust for for people in the television game, isn't it? We'll share the links so we can you can find your videos. You want. You would like to interview him? Ah, yeah, sure, for sure. I mean, it is the Roy Keane story. It's not going to be much of a story if uh, I don't get to talk to him. But whether that happens, PJ, or not, I'm going to keep soldiering on. I hope if he does get word of it that he sees that I'm deliberately focused in on the football. Do you know what, Paddy? I'm, I'm surprised that he isn't aware that you've got all these. Yeah, but I'm, I'm sure that if, if, if and when he does become aware of that, PJ, that he'll enjoy that, going going back, you know, right to the start and following through on some of the footage. I mean, there's no no possible way he's going to remember everything, all the interviews, all the places he visited, all the games he played. So, I mean, that, that, that'd be great for Ryan and his family, you know. And you know, our, our yeah. Trevor here from The Score and, of course, international football commentator is Trevor. He would surely have some way of making sure that Roy got to see some of your videos. Because I think it's cr- I'm amazed you've never met him. Yeah, someone is here. The, the comment uh, about Andy Robertson and the, and the referee. Ah, the baby, baby. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, Absolute com- he, com- com- he, comic timing. If he and, ever went into stand up, he'd pack he'd 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 pack theatres. You know what he did? He did that cameo role PJ, didn't he, with the young offenders and I mean it was a perfect 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 role from that time, you know. He was asking for a bag of chips in the window and he got his answer and, that's, right, know, that's right, that's right. Listen, yeah. it would be I'd love to be able to talk to you again in a in a few months or years' time and you for had sure, actually PJ. met wouldn't it be great? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I, I love it. that opportunity came around for sure. And they said, I'll be just focusing on the football. And, and, and we'll, share, we'll share everything that, that you have out there so people can have a look at what you've done. Paddy, fascinating conversation. And thank you very much. And we will talk again. It would be great to see Paddy get the opportunity to, to interview Roy uh, after amassing all that knowledge and all those videos. Local Legends on Dave Max Drive. Okay, a Cork legend, all about a Leaside legend. Stacks of YouTube vids about Roy Keane put together patiently by Paddy Callanan. More from him later in the week, but for now, Paddy, how many videos are up there? There's over 700 different videos on Roy Keane inside there. Well, what people of more recent generations might remember is Nottingham Forest had won two European Cups. Not not a whole lot of years before Roy Keane ended up playing with them. So there, were, there there's quite a few Nottingham Forest fans around, as there are sort of that's Leeds true, fans that's a good point. Yeah, from that yeah, era yeah, too. Yeah, uh, yeah, I played with Rockman yeah. myself back back in the day for a few years, and I was you know like a blow in from Dundalk, and I think I, I stood out like a, I was like an alien up there. They were like, where did this fella come from? But um, Tom Cronin had been a manager of ours in UCC. Oh, and, Tom, and, yeah, I worked with Tom back oh, in the yeah. day. Yeah. I remember oh, the chairman, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, and and he ended up um, he ended up get, draw, drawing me up to Rockmount when Terry Barrett and Barry Pilo were joint managers for a, for a couple of seasons. And like I, I did well to play at that level, and and kind of the other lads were you know, they went on to win intermediate cups in the years after the the bones of the team that I started with Alan Martin, and it was a great time. But seeing Roy Keane's picture up on the wall was just sort of like, geez. oh wow, wow. So yeah. you played you played senior with with Rockmount yeah. for, for that. Ah, yeah. super, super, well, super. if it was a few years after now, you know, but like Kino's pictures are up on the wall, and I was just delighted to be in somewhere sort of like connected with 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 a story like that, right in the middle of it. Actually, I remember going, I think, training for UCC and hearing the news that that Cluffy was starting Keen at Anfield. Yeah, it was incredible. incredible and and you know, I like literally remember hearing like, oh, Cluffy starting a Corkman tonight, and you know what I mean? Or I don't know, it was a Corkman movie, knew who he was already, but but I remember that moment when when Keno got a start at, at Anfield. There you go. That's dating me there too now, Paddy, isn't it? Ah, there you go, yeah. I mean, I, 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 I was in America that time, actually, when I got it. So I got it about three weeks after mm. it, it had happened. And my brother used to send over letters with uh, newspaper clippings and 
I was just totally blown, blown away, away by the fact that 19 year old Mayfield kid yeah. thrown in at the deep end of Nancy and that's what everybody did and do you know what I met know. his mum once I was working in um, the Bardike leisure complex and she was there and I said to him I said he was a Spurs fan growing up wasn't she and she goes that's <laughs> right he was <laughs> yeah, and yeah. Uh, I remember in the 1991 cup final Justin Edinburgh was marking him and they'd obviously been told to wind him up uh, so I'd say he was no, he was no Spurs fan after the end of that game anyway um, because Ed, Edinburgh just looked like the kind of like uh, your stereotyped sort of English lad giving an Irish lad a hard time and uh, Keita no, wasn't having uh, there was another guy behind him if you look at the footage he was giving him a bit of a hard time as well <laughs> but like, they obviously were told to target him like he'll blow up and, yeah and, they uh, were they were yeah but like the, the year after then he got a thumping header I don't remember in the pouring rain in the League Cup semi-final to go on and play United so he got his revenge over Spurs oh. yeah over Spurs yeah, oh. the semi-final oh, there you the go there you go four minutes and in the Anfield one, there's a story. Is it is it Paul Ince or someone? Or no, it was a Sunus, was it? It was someone sort of dog leash or whatever. And like ten minutes into the game, like Roy Keane as as the as the new boy, and he he I think he stands on him and and glowers at him or something. And the rest of his teammates were like, he'll be grand. Yeah, that, yeah, that was Brian Laws was behind him, and yeah. like the, the 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 whole build up to that debut was was Clough at his incredibly best. You know, protecting him from nerves, protecting him from the big occasion, and telling him literally half an hour before the game so he didn't have time to get nervous mm. and then Laws was told look you need to mind that kid mm. and he said who's the kid he didn't even know his name mm. so if they're going out onto the pitch he doesn't know Keen Keen doesn't know him and he, he Laws went up to Keen he says yeah, you know who's on our side he said no and he was going to tell him it was John Barnes because he's oh Barnes, was Barnes it was Barnes that's right <laughs> and then Barnes came down that side and he got a yellow card for uh, a bad tackle on Burroughs and 10 minutes later he, he bundled Barnes over the line and bent over and threw Talk. some superlatives at him and uh, <laughs> Law said, <laughs> Law said he'll I'm going to have no problem today he'll be fine Paddy pleasure yeah. chatting Roy Keane the pursuit of Roy Keane search for it and, and, and check out all of the archive Paddy has put together uh, painstakingly well done to you fair play My, much appreciated Dave. great to be on and, and thanks for having me on well I'm going to be talking yeah, yeah, yeah. to uh, Greg Corkman uh, Paddy Callanan now in a few minutes about the uh, oh, documentaries that he's done on Roy Keane so he's coming up next so yeah, you yeah. might stay tuned uh, and, and listen in on that but you have yeah. a good week and uh, I won't catch up with you next week I'm not here myself but I'll catch up with you the week after Now my next guest is a self-professed a Roy Keane expert and content creator I'm delighted to welcome to the show as I said content creator Paddy Callanan Good morning Paddy how are you? Good morning, Reggie. Great to be here with you. Thanks very much for bringing me on. Absolutely. Delighted to have you on. Delighted to have you on. It's an interesting uh, topic of conversation. I don't know if you've ever watched um, Ted Lasso. You'll probably tell me I'm mad to be watching it, but there's a character on that called Roy, uh, surprisingly enough. And uh, for all the world, he reminds me of an English version of Roy Keane, where in um, punditry, he tends to be very to the point and very direct. Uh, and I think that's what we love about Roy Keane. And no doubt, one of the many things that attracted you to him but you've kind of decided to do a series of documentaries that maybe looks at the other side that might be forgotten about a little bit these days and that's how skillful a player he was yeah very very good point and I've heard that that analogy the one about the Tate and I I think to be fair that's that that's certainly loosely based on Keane's type of commentary and punditry yeah as you said Reggie I've gone right back to the start you know the 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 Keane's playing career sometimes overlooked because of the controversy that surrounded certain parts of his career the the Saipan incident obviously and Alfie Halland and all of that and that takes away in my opinion from the incredible footballer that he was and the incredible career that he had starting at 19 years of age making his debut unbeknownst to himself he'd gone out uh, for points the night before after a reserve game he was called up the next uh, day to report to the forest grounds he was brought out to Clough's house he more than likely suffered with a little, little bit of a hangover Clough threw a bottle of milk into his hand he drank that went up to Anfield and 30 minutes before uh, the game's kicking off he's thought he's playing you know <laughs> so from there right up until the end of his career 2005 uh, 701 professional games in, in, in totality there, it's an amazing career it's an amazing story in that regard and I wanted to get that out to people for for, for people of my generation that would remember bringing them down memory lane and the younger generation just to highlight what an incredible unbelievable interesting time that was and what an incredible player he was 
Yeah, absolutely. And and the more than anything else, the sport uh, evolves over time. Professionalism evolves over time. I've seen it myself in rugby, the way things change uh, from when I played to what it is nowadays. And and Roy was there through such a long period of that. Did you, did you find in the research, interesting the way you mentioned, you're going out for a few pints and being thrown in at the deep end almost. Uh, did you find much of a change in the man himself and how his skills developed or his professionalism or his attitude changed? Did you find all that? Yeah, for, for sure. I mean, back in those days, I suppose it was like the pre-professional days in rugby, there was that mindset and right up until um, maybe the, the mid-90s, the late-90s, that that kind of going out after the game was, was part of the, the, the deal and the way Keane used to get around that up until 1998-99 was 48 hours before a game it was written into his contract that it was that, that that was okay but that was based on the premise that you were going out but you weren't staying out till whatever the early hours in the morning and plenty of times that did happen and I think Keane once he had that very bad injury in 1997 mm. he, he had a moment of clarity and he realised you know what this is a very very short career and it can be taken away from you very very quickly and I think that that was a watershed in regards how he prepared himself from that day forward. And I'm sure you remember the actual physical transformation in the guy. Yeah. He went lean, he lost weight, he was nearly gaunt to a certain degree. And I remember hearing a, a lovely antidote story that his mother came over and started quizzing him about what, what, what exactly you were doing, how you were preparing yourself. And he told her that he wasn't actually eating meat. And she got him back on, on steak and potatoes and cabbage. Yeah. You know, so... There, there, there was an incredible um, transformation in that time when he was driven to the point where from that incident where for one year he was out of the game and the career is extraordinarily short and extraordinarily fast and he decided he was going to get the most out of it. And, you know, his on-the-pitch skills were evident to see. I mean, that was there. But also, I was, I'm was i always intrigued with Roy Keane with the presence that he has uh, around other players and how it seemed to be in that United setup anyway, certainly under Fer- in, in the Ferguson time and everything else, that everyone was looking to him to be the the leader. And, you know, he got in tough and, and, and it was never dirty, in, you know, in my mind. He got in very tough and hard. But until he got into the game, it felt like the rest of the players around him couldn't. You know, he was really built into that leadership role. Sure, sure. And he, he, brought, he brought people up to his standard. And I, I, I'm sure at times in training and, and, and jury matches, that can't have been easy for the other players. But the standard that Keane said in lots of ways wasn't asking for much in regards, just empty the tank, give it 100%. And, you know, once you got got to that level, um, you'd have no problems with Roy Keane. But if you dropped off that 3 or 4%, he was going to be all over. He was going to be on your case. And he couldn't understand anybody that was in a privileged and in the professional position where you were getting paid to, to empty empty or the gas for 90 minutes you know um, he he couldn't get his head around the fact that some people would slacken off during mm. the game mm. and that's, that, that was his drive and he had that Reggie from a very very young age I had the the privilege or probably we were destroyed actually in an under 14 game back in back in 1985 I was on the pitch I was more of a Gaelic footballer now but I was I talked out that day against mm. him they hammered us 5-1, a great rock mount team. That was his club. And when they were 4-5-1 or five, one up, Keane was given up to his, to his own players that day. You well, know, I distinctly remember that. Yeah, you know? he wanted so, that level out of them. Yeah, he, it's just, he had to drive. And if things weren't right and things weren't going mm. the way he thought they should be, he was given out. You know? And that's given out in, 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 in a positive way. Sometimes that's reflected that he's a little bit strong, a little bit forceful, maybe a little bit too much. But... You know certain um, sports characters like Brian Driscoll, Paul O'Connell, Roy Keane, they're winners. They hate losing. And if you're not buying into that mindset, they're going to be all over you. So what will our listeners uh, get from this documentary that maybe they haven't gotten before from others that uh, have been doing it? We know the skill levels, but what have you delved into and what what have you what are you hoping to get across to the public who will watch this? Yeah, when, when, when I started doing the first stretch, I was very surprised in lots of ways that Roy's had his own two autobiographies which have been lots of biographies lots of articles lots of ink on paper and all of that but nobody's gone in went into the depth in regards 
the total statistical chronological order of his career mm. and I've gone right back to the very very start of his days at Rockmount his, his schoolboy club up to his first professional contract with Cove the incredible story of the trial with Noel McCabe and getting the break to go over to Forest his Forest days or 154 games with them and bear this one in mind an incredible statistic three years with Forest 154 games no red card <laughs> not one single red card Amazing. to the United 21 years of age the most expensive player Manchester had bought at that time captain at 25 and um, World Cup with Ireland in 1994 and sometimes things like that uh, the World Cup in 94 is overshadowed by Saipan he was the best player on the pitch against Italy in 1994 um, right up to being captain when Cantona retired at 25 and all the way out Reggie to 2005 I've, I've a playlist section as well if, if people want to go on and watch that and this is particularly for all all, all people that, that love statistics yeah. every match professional match that Roy Keane played I've that documented so go into this, the descriptions you'll see all the appearances you'll see all the statistics um, and that's including all the, the professional games in England as a player and Ireland under 21 right up to senior so I've documented everything all in chronological order my own videos 112 of them start with uh, the Rockmount days right up on Till where we are at 2000 now I'm going to get to the to, to the right to the end hopefully to the present day so everything he's done everything he said um, all the games I, I've got them there so the best way to find it Reggie is, is, is I suppose type in The Pursuit of Roy Keane that's my most popular video of 60,000 views of that or close to it now yeah. and then that'll bring you to the channel and you'll get everything you want so. well if God needs a hero from old Mayfield so well, Keno, it's our fitch Where a free man can run World Cups are their heroes Still Ireland's own son Riot is a leisure One sweetest of all Ireland and Lace Losing the turf, the ball flying home wide with the less iron car. He knew the artist, that mystical clown, no greater magician on a footballer's ground. And if God needs a hero. From old Mayfield Sound El Kino and Surfage Where a free man can run While the Caps had their heroes Still Ireland's own son A riot is leisure But the sweetest of all Manchester United, the best of his years, being chased by the limelight, but cost him so dear. Aquino the terrier could deliver his song, defending feet like that. A magnificent goals and if God needs a hero From out Mayfield Town Melkino it's her pitch Well a free man can run While cops have their heroes Still Ireland's own son Riot he's a leisure but the sweetest of all When right took possession The field took him on Some tried Had to break him But in the end all would fall When right left them standing Nightmares began 
the master of confusion was the old plumber's son and if God needs a hero from out Mayfield town Melchino a tar pitch vice where a free man can run while cops have their heroes still Ireland's own son Ryan's leisure was the sweetest of all and if God needs a hero from old Mayfield town Belkino a turf pitch finds where a free man can run world cups are their heroes still Ireland's own son Sweetest of all, right keen at his leisure, was the fiercest of all.